Part 3. Conclusions. Perception of distance. So in paragraph 46, he's starting to wrap up the discussion of distance, and he's bringing in the, the sight-sound analogy. Um, so ideas of space, outness, and things placed at a distance are not, strict, strictly speaking, the objects of sight, or the immediate and proper objects of sight. They are not otherwise perceived by the eye than the ear. Now, if a coach passes by my window, it stops, and I move towards it and enter, common speech would incline one to think that I heard, I saw, and touched the same thing, i.e. the coach. It is nevertheless certain that the ideas intromitted by each sense are widely different and distinct from each other. But having been observed constantly to go together, they are spoken of as one and the same thing. By the ear, I can perceive distance through a pitch change of the moving coach. And so it is that I can perceive distance by its changing shape as I walk towards it. The ideas perceived by hearing are not so apt to be confounded with the ideas of touch as those of sight are. The reason why is that it is thought a great absurdity to imagine that one and the same thing should have any more than one extension and one figure. Nevertheless, it has been proved that sight and touch are different and distinct forms of unrelated information, though it may require some thought to recognize this. The main difficulty is increased because we have only one word for both the visible and the tangible object which arises out of the use and end of language. And in conclusion, there are two sorts of objects apprehended by the eye, one primary and immediate, and the other secondary, which is only possible by intervention of the former. The primary and immediate objects of sight are of no distance off and are not without the mind. They may grow greater or smaller, more confused or clear, or more faint, but they do not recede or approach from us. So now finally in paragraph 51, he introduces this idea of visual language. So no sooner than the immediate objects of sight are upon us, does our understanding at the same instant judge distance, magnitude, situation, motion, and the like. In exactly the same way, when we hear the sounds of a familiar language, the corresponding words and ideas immediately present themselves to our understanding. So constant and so closely are they united that we have no power to separate them. Therefore, the primary or immediate objects of sight, color mainly, do immediately suggest the secondary objects of sight, distance, size, location, etc., which have a far greater effect on us.